first one and then you can go and rename that afterwards. I suggest we don't do this. The reason is the same as I said before. When you're going through at the, at the zero hour, you're three, three hours into your migration and the customer says, why isn't this working? And you go and look at the rule on the ASA and it says object 1020.89.202 and then you go and look at the rule on the Palo Alto and it says H. Granted, that's logical that they're the same thing, but it's easier to say to the customer, look, the rule's exactly the same. So I highly recommend you do not do the duplicated values, that you wait until after. And oh, by the way, after, you can pull that migrated config that now is working just fine back into this migration tool to do some of these things and then push it back out. So this first migration, like for like, is not the only time that you'll be using these, these different options. Um, and here's another one. Um, this is groups with one member. So every one of these address groups over here only has one member. So we're going to go down and use group to address right here. And bam, we no longer have any. They've all been migrated over as addresses. All right, so let's see. That's probably all we have to do on this one but I want to double check. Um, we're going to go back to, I'll go double check on the PowerPoint. So this PowerPoint can be used as a great reference tool. This is showing that we went down from 1198 to 1060. We got rid of quite a few um, uh, addresses and we went from 150 address groups down to 127. Um, here's us going through and doing all of our different things and we're done. So we're done with address uh, groups So now we're going to do services and service groups, basically ports. We're going to look for the audit logs for any uh, error messages regarding services. We're going to check for invalid ones, duplicate names, du duplicate values, and we'll do the same thing where we'll check to see if there are any service groups that only have one member. Um, notice I don't have the part in here where we check for, um, uh, where we check, where we get rid of unused. And I'll show you why. Because when we hit that red button, it worked for services as well. So there are none. They're already gone. All right, so let's go check our other options. First of all, in the audit logs, do we have anything regarding services. You notice this refers to security rules and NAT rules. We'll talk about those when we get to those. These are all security policies. We go to the second page. These deal with um, with security rules and these deal with security rules as well. So nothing there. Under services, we'll check each one of these. Do we have any invalid? No, we don't. Do they happen? Yes, sometimes they do. Um, with the earlier versions, like I said, this one automatically changed ICMP to our app ID ICMP and it changed DRE, it changed other things. Uh, with the older versions, you'll often see them and you can usually tell by the name of the object what it's supposed to be, but if not, you go back to that ASA config, look inside, and see what application uh, it actually is, what protocol it is. So after invalid, no duplicate names, lots of duplicate values, same thing I said before, I would wait. The second time you pull this into your migration tool is when I would actually change those. Groups with one member, there's only a few. We go down here and notice you're missing three options, two more options down there. That's because they specifically apply to uh, addresses. So group to service, that's taken care of and that's it. Um, now I do go through and look and see, you know, if anything looks wrong. I do a visual and I also afterwards I do one with the customer, but generally speaking this, this looks like it's in pretty good shape. I'm not seeing any, any issues. All right, so that was our services. We did the um, groups with one member part, that's here. And now we're down to the rules. Okay. So several things we're going to do here with the rules. Um, we're going to check for errors. 
Uh, we're also going to validate the automatic fixes that the migration tool did. Um, secondly, we're going to check the source zone. With an ASA, you're kind of lucky because um, every rule is applied to an interface. If it's applied inbound to that interface, automatically you know what the source zone is. If it's applied outbound to that interface on the ASA, you automatically, automatically know what the destination zone is. Generally speaking, they are all applied inbound. So generally speaking, you know by default what every single um, source zone is. In the older versions, pre-8.4, yes, you would know it, but the tool didn't know it. And you literally had to go in and say, and, and, and choose those, uh, which was kind of a pain. But with the, the newer versions of ASA, it does it for you automatically. Um, destination zone, in this case, because all of our access lists are applied inbound on the interfaces on the ASA, that's not automatic. So our tool is going to do its very best to figure those out based on your interface IPs and subnets your, and, all, and all of your, uh, your routes. Um, so we'll go through and see if it was able to do that properly. Uh, that help, requires help from the customer. They, but be careful that they don't assume the intent of a rule. In other words, if a rule has a really broad, like 192, 168, slash 16 network and it says okay the destination on this must be all of these zones the, the customer may come up and say no nah, that's not what we really meant but be careful because just because he doesn't think it's it, it's that the, the, the intent of the rule is right just keep in mind that what traffic's passing through that rule may be, may be more than what he thinks is passing through that rule so be careful that you don't end up changing these so much that you end up with a failed migration. Um, the last one is check for rules with a combination of applications and services. You cannot have a rule with both applications and services. Imagine a rule allowing the application web browsing and the service TCP 22. It's just not going to work. Uh, so any uh, rules that have a combination have to be split into two rules. Alright, so we'll go and see. So here we are showing um, that every rule that, that has a message in the audit log will show this, this little caution sign. This is telling you basically that it took ICMP um, and automatically moved it over and made it an application. That's basically what that's telling you. I'm going to show you that inside the, the migration tool. Okay, so we're going to go over to the rules. The reds are denies, the greens are permits. Um, first thing we'll do is go look at what type of error messages we, we saw about the rules. Uh, so this one is what I was telling you. It says forcing zone from to inside based on the access list because that access list was applied in the direction in. It says the same thing here. Forcing the, the from zone to DMZ because the access list DMZ was inbound on that interface, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's all this is telling you. And by the way, you can do this and say, I have fixed or validated those entries. So those are nothing we need to worry about. Those that were handled for us. You'll notice the yellows, you don't have to fix anything there. You just It's meant to tell you what it did and have you check and make sure it was okay. Um, the reds have to be fixed. You cannot finish the migration without fixing them. These have to do with NAT, so we're going to ignore those for now. Oh, back to page one. These also have to do with NATs, you notice, so we'll ignore those as well. So here's some other ones. Um, this one here, this refers to rule number 13, is using the protocol name ICMP, so it's telling you that it added that to the rule. If I go back to rule number 13, you'll notice that's the one we were seeing on the PowerPoint. ICMP. It knew enough to take that service ICMP and move it over and make it in the app ID. So all of those error messages um, are just for information only and they're in good shape. Uh, notice this one here.